Happy Saturday. How are you on this Saturday? Down here in Florida, it is raining hard. We've all had almost an inch of rain already, which we need, but the rain is moving out. So we're gonna have a nice weekend, huh? And we're going to Doug College this morning. Me and you know who, where she's gonna learn some more obedience. I'm not sure what I'm gonna learn. Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. And the best of my life is the rest of my life. Do you believe that? Don't forget, even on Saturday, I answer the phone, except when I'm in dog college. I don't want to get a timeout. I got a timeout when I was at the gym last year because I answered the phone and somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, they gave me a timeout. That was, I'm not sure how I took that. Children get timeout. And I still told everybody, I got a timeout. Timeouts are for kids. And everybody looked at me and went, well, I don't know about these people. My entourage is not here. So I had to fix myself up this morning. Don't forget, I do answer the phone today. And please share this video with everybody you know. This is a neat video today. These are all good. People like these videos. I'm telling you, I get so many compliments on these videos. And I appreciate your com compliments because they're very encouraging. They give me the encouragement to keep doing this. How many of you know this is a big deal to put these videos out there? There's a lot of production that goes into these videos. But you know what? It's worth it because I love God's people. Also, when you do your offerings and donations today, a lot of people do them on the weekends. Call me because I want to speak the blessing over you. Hey, I want to talk to you right now about what God cannot overcome. People say, well, Pastor Jim, God can do anything. No, no, he can't quite do anything. How many of you know that there are spiritual laws that have been set up? And God himself is subject to spiritual laws. They're his laws. He made them. He must abide by them. He has to. Otherwise, it's no longer a law. And if it's no longer a law, then we don't have to abide by it. If God would break one of his spiritual laws, then we wouldn't have to abide by it either. He won't do it. Amen? I want to show you something here. I want to show you. Jesus had some miracles. How many of you know he had a few miracles? There was a few things going on. In Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, there were some incredible miracles in Mark chapter 5. The woman with the issue of blood made her way through the crowd, whether she crawled through the crowd or whether she pushed her way through the crowd, but she had had an issue of blood, she was bleeding for 12 years. Went to the doctors, they took all of her money, and, and she was worse off. But she got through the crowd and grabbed a hold of the clothes of Jesus. And the power went out of him. And into her. How many of you know the power of God? Now, we're going to be talking a lot about this in the next few weeks because we got a book coming out on miracles. And I'm going to tell you exactly and show you in this book, and you will read in this book exactly what happens when a miracle transpires and what causes it and how to get one. This is a neat book. And my proof copy is on the way right now as we speak. And... Once I get that proof, 
that book will be available on Amazon. Amen. And uh, we're going to make this book available to you. I'm telling you, I want everybody to read this book on miracles because we're going to sit on these miracles for a while. But Jesus had these two incredible miracles in Mark chapter 5 where this woman with the issue of blood, the minute she grabbed a hold of the clothes of Jesus, she was healed. She literally pulled the electricity, that healing power, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. That power that God anointed Jesus was with was miracle working power. And that power was in him and on him. And when that woman grabbed a hold of him, it flowed out of him into her. And she was healed. That power is a wonderful thing, folks. It's like electricity. Electricity is a wonderful thing. That This phone is working right now because of electricity. The lights that you see around here are on because of electricity. It's power. But not like the power of God. That's true power. Then Jairus, <clears throat> his daughter, was at the point of death and Jesus went with him. That's when he ran into the woman with the issue of blood. And so he got delayed. Well, after he dealt with that woman and, and told her her faith had made her whole, her faith was in him, of course. Then they started toward the house and people came and said, don't bother the master anymore because she's already dead. Jairus said nothing. Jesus looked at him and said, don't be afraid. Only believe. Look what he said. He said to him, he says, don't be not afraid. Don't be afraid. Just believe. His daughter was dead. They kept going. Do you know, just because somebody's dead doesn't mean Jesus stops. Amen. They kept going. They kept going. They got there. He told everybody, she's just sleeping. She wasn't dead. They mocked him. He put them all out. Get out. He took a hold of the little girl's hand and told her to get up. And then said, get her something to eat. That's true, folks. That's that and that believe me, that little girl was dead. She was just as stone cold dead as dead could be. But not when Jesus touched her. Her spirit came back into her body and she rose. But very shortly after, this man, this son of God, our Lord and Savior, who did incredible miracles. Couldn't do anything. What happened? In the next chapter, it says Jesus left from there and went to his own country, his own town, his own home. And when the Sabbath day came, he began to teach. And many were astonished. And they said, who is this? That's, that's Jesus. We know him. That's Mary's son. Joseph's son. That's he's a carpenter. And he's comes and he comes back here and he's teaching like this. Hello. You know, when I go back to my hometown, especially the town we left, Tomahawk, Wisconsin, they love me there. Well, they don't really love me there. A couple people like me, maybe. But they don't think I'm anything special because they're familiar with me. They knew me when I used to sell cars there and I used to work in the car lots and, and things like that. And the people in my own hometown of Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania, they love me. They love my brother. They love me. But they don't think I'm anything special. They don't realize the power of God is upon me. They don't appreciate that. They have no faith in my ability to make things happen for them. 
but people all over the world do. And the people all over the world get miracles when they call me. But the people in Slippery Rock, where I grew up, never call me. I've never had one phone call from those people. Not one. Yet they all see my Facebook posts. They see the miracles. They don't believe it. This is Jim. Jim Kibler. We knew him. He grew up. That's Edith's son. He went to high school. He played baseball and was on the track team and, and was popular in school and, and everything. And he was a weightlifter and all this and that. He's just a, he's just a person. Yeah, I am just a person with the anointing of God. Just like you are. You're anointed by God too. Everybody's anointed for something. Amen. Well, Jesus went back to his hometown. They said, isn't this the carpenter and the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? He had four brothers and sisters. Look at verse five. Notice I got the, notice I got verse five marked. I got verse five marked. And there he could do no mighty work. You mean to tell me Jesus himself could do no mighty work? No. This son of God, full of power, couldn't do anything. Why? Because of their unbelief. God is bound by the law of faith. Romans 3, 27. Where is boasting? Do we boast in works? Do we brag about our works? No. Works don't get us anything, but it's the law of faith, it says. Everything God does is, the law of faith says in, in uh, Hebrews 11, 6, Without faith, you get nothing from God. Jesus said in Matthew 9, 29, he says, be it unto you according to your faith. If you ain't got no faith, you get nothing from God. Faith is like money. When you go to the store, if you go to the store with $20, you get $20 worth of food. If you go to God with a little bit of faith, you get a little bit from God. But if you go to God with great faith, there's nothing you can't have. The children of Israel came through the, you know, just, they just, they came to God, parted the Red Sea, did everything, all these miracles he did for them. He guided them by night with a flame, guided them by day by a cloud, and God could not bring them into the promised land. He couldn't do it. He couldn't get them into the promised land because of their unbelief. God is bound by the law of faith. Could he break that? Well, he could, but he won't. And he will not heal you apart from faith. He will not prosper you or provide for you apart from faith. And he won't save you apart from faith either. Everything depends on faith. Without faith, God will do nothing for you. With faith, there's nothing he won't do for you. Glory to God, I'm almost out of time. Was that good today? You need a boost in your faith. You call me, because here's one good thing about faith, it's transferable. I can use my faith to get you what you need just like people use Jesus' faith to get healed. Hannah used Eli's faith to have a baby. Everybody, uh, the woman used Elisha's faith to save her family. They used Elijah's faith to feed her children. I am out of time. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you back here on Monday.